Um, as a girl, I have faced stuff that I should not have faced. Um, I have been sexually abused multiple times. I've never spoken about it since I was a kid. I think it started when I was about four years older, so I don't remember exactly. So proud of you, firstly, for bringing this up. Like it was so much for me to take in, as like sitting on this side of it. So I can barely imagine. A lot of guys have a very different perspective on feminism based on the social media or something like that. So I want you to explain that a little bit for the people who are. Watching. Yeah. So for me, what feminism is is simply having equal opportunities and not discriminating. That's it. Basically, being mm -hmm. human is feminism. Right. That's for me, and I think that's the actual definition. And feminism is not just for women. To be honest, women have it. Men have it. Okay, I should not be saying it this way. I don't mean it that way. But I hope you get the point. Men have it easier than other genders. It's the easiest. Next come women. Okay, women have it easier than the LGBTQ community. Mm. if you consider it they have it the worst yeah. okay women still have it easier so when i say feminism it's not just about women it's also about that community and it's not mm. that all the men have it easier it's not that way of course yeah. there are exceptions right there are people who are low even men who are not having it easy so it's yeah. we are trying we don't want to put a box around it but it's just a general assumption or as per stats basically mm. so whoever is not having it easier right it's just to give everybody that push and to have equal opportunities that's it but people yeah. take it in the wrong way and they are like it's it's not that women want to rule the world women have to be above men not at all no that's never the case that's that's not how it works right it's yeah. it's just like uh, when uh, uh, the apartheid in south africa right at that point of time and there was a lot of blacks and white uh, conflicts yeah. at that point of time imagine the whites ruled the whites ruled for so long basically mm. the blacks were slaves for mm. you know for decades right and yes. even then once nelson mandela come came up and yeah. you know they got rid of all that they did not say now the blacks are going to torture the whites they never said that mm -hmm. it's basically about equality at the end they said we'll stay together and we'll just remove whatever has happened we'll forget about it yeah. so this is kind of the same thing it's not about one being above the other it's just about living in harmony and giving each other equal opportunities that's it so i think people yeah. get it wrong that it's about getting somebody higher than the other it's not like that not at all yeah. Yeah, I love that you brought. I love that this is exactly why I wanted to bring this up because hearing it from a woman, firstly, and uh, yeah, I I love that definition. Uh, another thing that I want to ask you, based on this only, uh, is there anything that you have faced as a woman in uh, which was difficult for you? I'm asking this because there will be a lot of women who are watching this. Yeah, and I want them to firstly connect with it and understand that you are not alone. and at the same time i want to know your experience on it see um as a girl i have faced stuff that i should not have faced um i have been sexually abused multiple times it started when i was a small girl <laughs> and never spoken about it so okay. okay. I have been sexually abused since I was a kid. I think it started when I was about four years older, so I don't remember exactly. So, first it began by a stranger, at least that's what I remember, and then by a family member itself. So, other than these two people, I've had multiple other examples, just like other people have. The experiences you asked, uh, as a girl. I'm sure it happens to boys too, but it obviously happens to girls more, much more. So I have faced sexual abuse since when I was a kid. I think it, I remember first when I was four years old. So I faced it. Um, I think, yeah, I was. I think I was four. Guys, remember the incident very clearly. I remember my brother being carried, so I kind of know how small he is. So I'm kind of assuming my age because we are very close. Uh, age, age is very close. 
and after that yes yeah, uh you know multiple times by again by a family member so when i have strong opinions on this i have strong opinions for a reason and yeah i have strong or very strong opinions on this because of this and other than these examples which are let's say a bit too brutal or harsh general examples are always there i mean usually every woman faces it uh everybody actually i don't think there's a single woman who has not faced any sort of abuse ever because you know as per stats which i was kind of reading this i'm talking about now one specific kind of abuse uh, domestic abuse okay it's about i was reading a stat where 30% of indian women have accepted to be abused by husband or family so this could be any sort of you know you get the point only 30% have accepted you know that the percentage will be way higher considering the societal norms because you can't go back home right if you accept it but along with this stat there are about 39% of men who are accepted to abuse their wives so only 30% of them accepted it and this is just their wives you're getting my point it's not a stranger this is just their wife that's it so if this is the case with a family member you can you can imagine how she will face it with general public there'll be multiple more instances which people don't talk about so yeah that's it i have like so much respect for you for even bringing this up because it's not at all easy and um, all these all these things you know all these topics on sexual abuse or uh, rapes harassment all these guys they will you know make a debate out of it uh, it becomes a political issue it becomes yeah. something to debate on but what guys don't understand is it becomes a woman's life and that's what she faces so a lot of the laws a lot of these laws a lot of these uh rules that are made they are not made with respect to like you you won't have a probably you won't even have a woman in the room while making that law that's true there will there will be guys who are making a law for the women yeah and that 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 is what i wanted to put out through this and it's just like i'm so proud of you firstly for bringing this up like it was so much for me to take in as like sitting on this side of it so i can barely imagine like and some people be like you know i understand what your pain is i don't i have never gone through something that brutal so i i don't understand it but all i can do is empathize and probably try to understand that's yeah, trying to understand i think is very important because most people don't do that they basically just say that you're just playing the victim card and that's it but it's not a victim card so if you can imagine let's say that i face it 20 times i think the number is less but with it 20 not once has a police complaint been filed not once so you can imagine if i have not done it after multiple times imagine how many others have not complained just imagine the percentages how much is not being reported i can tell you with my own example i'm good i'm good <laughs> so now just coming back uh, a little bit uh, i'm trying to relate two topics over here one is obviously you faced a lot of things in life uh, when it comes to uh, all that you spoke about how does someone who has faced all of that end up becoming you or something like end up becoming uh someone who has healed from some part of it at least some part of it and become a person who wants to understand and grow because a lot of the people they go through all of that and then they go into a toxic spiral and they feel it's them who is not being accepted into the world so how does someone like someone who has faced that understand that you know healing is required I think at some point of time you realize that something's got to change and about healing right Anish I think we had this once in a chat where I mentioned um 
except some deep wounds cannot be healed completely i remember saying this to you basically i was referring to this so yeah some wounds i don't think that they can be healed um i think the healing will take place throughout our lives whatever it is because for everybody it's a bit different for me what i faced let's say was difficult for somebody else it may not be that difficult right the healing process is diff- it's different for everybody so um i think it goes on life long and i remember listening to a podcast sometime about healing and it was mentioned i don't remember who it was i'm sorry i don't remember but i remember that guest mentioning that for healing to take place you first require acknowledgement and if the acknowledgement happens it's easier to get out of it basically heal so if the person who has hurt you is able to acknowledge that you know say sorry to you about it of course you're hurt of course you're not going to forgive them but you feel like them but if that acknowledgement does not take place which is not going to take place in my for me it's not going to go very easily so basically if i have to compare it to a physical wound some wounds of ours we just fall and there's no scar nothing remains right it just we very easily come out of it but sometimes there are scars that remain on our bodies right and those scars can never go uh, unless you go and get a surgery done and get something done you know that's because now we have advanced with science and technology right in our world right now but if you just keep that aside keep surgery aside there's no way that we can get rid of our wound a wound is going to be a wound forever some wounds are not going to go they just remain there on the top and overall it is healed but there are times where you are going to look at it and the memory will come back right so it's kind of the same over here if i have to connect it sometimes you remember it will come back but just because you react to it it does not mean that you're not healing you are healing but it takes time sometimes a lifetime what is your advice or something that you have achieved probably through healing uh some of your wounds uh maybe not all to the other women or even some guys who might have gone through something similar maybe not too much too much that magnitude but at least something what is your advice for them on uh, my voice is literally shaking but like what is what is your advice to them on this whole topic when see uh, i believe that you can have small trauma and you can have big trauma so most of the small trauma is something that can be healed you know like yeah. if if you were uh, made fun of or something like that yeah, yeah. that can be healed whereas big trauma takes like a lot of time like you said so how do people heal the small trauma uh, if they've only faced that but also some people who have faced the big trauma how do they also heal some part of that okay so i think it's different for everybody i keep mentioning it because it is different for everybody and we all are in different phases of our lives so and we react to a situations differently right for example if a monkey comes in front of you right now you may react differently i may react differently i may find the monkey cute may you may get scared i'm just saying mm-hmm. so we react differently to different situations so uh, there are uh, we all have different phases of our life so i will not say there's a specific way to heal a niche i don't think there's there's a specific way as long as this one thing we should do is not blame ourselves that's it as long as we tell ourselves it was not us we don't blame ourselves and we take whatever the required steps are for you at that particular time whatever it may be now let us say that you went through something and you are behaving in a certain way because of it and i don't agree with you but i should still be respecting it because you are going through it not me and you are reacting in the best possible way for you whatever is helping you best i should not be putting forward my thing that you should be doing this this is what i realized when i analyzed myself because i didn't realize what happened to me till i reached college i realized it later so i think i was about 16 17 years old when i realized it later so basically it happened when i was younger which i don't have a memory of i mean i have the memory of it but you know so basically i'll tell you what really happened when i was a, a kid right i think because i faced this as a kid i've had the habit of just burying things mm-hmm. so something happens i just bury it and go forward i just let go i don't go back 
So at that point of time, I think what I did was for my own benefit. I didn't really know what happened to me, but I felt uncomfortable. I didn't like what happened to me. And you know, our Indian parents do not really educate us about what they should be educating us about, right? What is a good touch? What is a bad touch? Sex education, you're not given all these things. So I didn't know what happened to me. But I think when I reached, when I actually reached college, when I was at a college, I think I was in the 12th standard when this happened to me again. And I, there was this guy who actually, I was literally near my house, 50 meters from my house. And this guy just came and kind of groped me, okay? Kind of molested me right in front of my house. And the same guy started stalking me after that. So he, I kind of had multiple encounters with him. So the first time when this happened, you know, that's kind of a shock to you, right? It's happened after a few years, a few years gap. And even if it happened before that, it actually happened because later on when I recollected it happened to me when I, when I'd gone for some tournaments, I remember that later, but I didn't know at that point of time. And when I went back, I realized that, okay, I kind of buried things. I didn't want to go back there. And later on, it happened to me again with the relative I was mentioning, like since I was eight years old, I think till I was 12 or 13, 12 years old. So it happened for four years. And after that, I don't have, I, I kind of forgot. I, so the point is I should just put things away, right? Because I didn't understand. Imagine I was 12 years old, it was happening to me and I don't know what is happening to me. That is how bad our education system is. I should have been taught by my parents or the school, but I had no idea. So yeah, when it happened to me in college, then the memories start flowing. You know, this happened to me here, that happened to me there, because you get the feeling that it's kind of similar touches, right? You, you kind of, everything comes back. So when I went back, I realized that I started putting things, you know, just burying things and not getting back to them. So I think it has affected me even today. I have the habit of not going back to things. It's like, if I leave something, I leave it and that's it. <laughs> I do not get back. So for me, I realized it much later, but I wouldn't say that I did the wrong thing in life because as a four year old, what was I going to do? I didn't have an idea, but what was, what was happening, right? At that point of time, I buried it later on. Okay. Eight years, nine years, 10 years, 11 years, 12 years, whatever happened. I didn't have an idea. I buried it. I just continued the same cycle. And I don't blame myself for that. So what I was trying to say is we are different and we cope up differently. But then now, you know, after so many years, it's like the way I look at it now is I'm able to speak about it now, whatever it may be. However, I am speaking about it. I am speaking about it. At one point of time, there was no way that I was even going to think about it. I would just, uh, uh, to, to not think about it, I would just watch a movie or watch some comedy show, which I do even now. Uh, comedy shows are kind of my thing to go. If I don't want to think about something, I watch a comedy show. But I'm able to talk about it now. So this is progress. So. And all I'm trying to say is whatever you got to do, do it, but you got to analyze your actions at one stage you'll realize, okay, now I cannot bury it. If you are in that phase, if you have not been burying it, then that is great. You know, that means you've already gone further, but you have to realize which phase you're in and react accordingly. Now, I'm not saying that you should do, I mean, whatever you do is fine. I'm not saying that. Of course you have to analyze your actions and that's what I'm saying. I realize that burying is not going to help me, right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to take action. I have to go further. I think slowly, you know, you start, you have to be the person who's going to analyze your actions. Like, is this, am I doing this right? Is this good for me? Like, is it helping me? If you ask yourself these questions, I think you'll automatically re realize that, okay, maybe I should not be doing this anymore and maybe I should go forward, but I'm not going to blame myself for the way I've reacted earlier because that was totally fine. If you get my point. So it's different for everybody. However, you have to do it, you do it. So I'm just saying this in general, Anish, it's not just about abuse. Okay. It could be anything. Like, for example, I lost my cousin about a couple of years back, very young, younger than me. Okay. So, uh, uh, till date, I can see how his mom is coping with it inside. I feel that she should not be, you know, coping with it that way, like the way she is. But she brought up the child for 21 years or whatever his age was. So she has her own way of coping with it, right? Her loss. 
but I feel that she should not be doing it and I feel that she should move on. But I should be understanding that she will move on from that phase when she feels like she should. If she feels that she's reached that spot. But again, if she does not want to move on and she does not analyze her actions, then I can't do anything about it. Now that's up to her, right? If I'm going to interfere, I'm just going to stop her healing process. Maybe I can go and be kind to her and talk to her, but I'm not supposed to, you know, saying that you should be doing this or doing that. So I'm just trying to show that any situation, any kind of trauma, do what you got to do for yourself. Whatever, however you feel better, as long as you're not hurting somebody else. I mean, there are lots of people who are, huh, this is one more uh, very common thing. You know, most abusers have been abused as per stats. They're abusers because they've been abused. Like I have a choice now, do I want to become a child abuser or do I want to become somebody who saves the children? So that is the point is around another uh, thing, very common mother-in-law and daughter-in-law problems. Why do you think that the mother-in-law is so harsh on her daughter-in-law? It's because she has faced those problems herself. Mm -hmm. And then she kind of, it's like, you know, her frustration that she has faced it. So why should the other person not face it? And it, the cycle continues. So you mostly the people who have been abused are the ones who continue it usually unless now if, if 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 they are just forwards and that's a different case i'm just talking in general because i've seen this even in my own family now the examples i'm giving you are just analyzing my my own family and myself like i can tell you my grandmom my mom both have been you know uh, when i'm saying abuse this is about mother or daughter-in-law kind of abuse you get the point right so it's not real abuse i'm just saying the relationships that's not really abuse but you get the point the relationship is that way because they have not been treated properly. They don't treat the others properly. So yeah, that's usually the case. I mean, how much have I have read? That's what it is most of the times. So you have a choice. You want to become the better person or you want to continue the cycle. And if you are the person who wants to break the cycle, then you're going to bring the change. But if you continue the cycle, which usually happens, and I think this is a problem, not just with abuse and trauma, everything in, in this world, people just continue the cycle, continue the cycle, continue the cycle. No one wants to be the change. And if somebody is the change, then your life cannot really be the best you'll have lots of problems in life that usually happens because you're not following the crowd any field anything yeah so that, that yeah. happened that happened with me on a lower level uh and what had happened was i think uh during my schooling there was a time where i i was not this kind of person who could give the insults back you know like i could not be the one who would come up with great comebacks you know yeah so, yeah uh that was considered the cool at that time mm. and so i was always this person who was sort of cornered you know? yeah. and now when i look back at it the people who were taunting me were people getting taunted by their own seniors exactly <laughs> so that was the cycle that was forming in and yeah it happened it almost happened with me because there was a newcomer who came in school and I was like, this person does not have connections. So he would, and that was my mentality at that time. And I was like, probably if I take up on this person, then probably I will be able to join that group. Probably yeah. I'll be able to fit in into that thing. But one day I saw this guy sitting alone. I went and I sat next to him and I asked him, what's up? Just, just a normal conversation. He was a friend, but I was using him as a person to try to fit in. I sat with him and he was like, Anish, I don't know what I'm doing in this group. And I just, I just, I was, he, after that, the break got over, whatever he went up, the teacher didn't come in the class. And I was just sitting there and just like thinking about it, like from his perspective. And I was like, he's feeling the same things that I was feeling. And that's what I realized, you know, even if you see the movies and all of this, they show the villain with a scar on their head, exactly. with, uh, with some limbs missing yeah, or something like a, you know, a limp or something like that. Yeah. And those are people who have got that torture. The same way the hero, you will see him, a person who is, you know, uh, abandoned by his family or who has been bullied in the class, who is not accepted, you know. But yeah. the only difference is in the mentality where the villain is like, the world has hurt me, I will hurt the world back. And the hero is like, the world has hurt me and I'll make sure that it does not happen to the other <laughs> person. Exactly. It's, 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 as you mentioned, the mentality and how you react to the thing, because we all face similar situations, similar problems. Point is, how do we react and where, how do we want to see ourselves? Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, for, uh, bringing this up. Like it really means a lot. The fact that like you could literally put it out and yeah, but again, anyone... I want, I want to mention the victim. If you have faced anything, it does, it can be anything. 
to not feel guilty very important yeah i feel guilty till date so it's very important and another thing to anish these are all deep stuff so another thing on this very topic right you said face as a woman i think most women face the problem of not being given the choice freedom of choice like you want to do this or you want to do that the choice is not given you want to get married to him or no choice is not given do you want to get married choice is not given yeah. like it's just told to them you know i can tell you with my own experience even though i come from such a supposedly modern family and uh, goa <laughs> still yeah. still still have faced it so, so we, can, we can just imagine like what happens in other states even though goa is considered western and it still exactly. happens in goa Yes, mm-hmm. Goa is considered Western. Plus, I'm living in Goa. That's why I come to Western. Plus, I have lived abroad. My parents have lived abroad, and yet it has happened to me. You can understand. So, if it has happened to me, I think freedom of choice is very important, which girls are not given. And it's one thing is freedom of choice, and another thing is opportunities. Because they're a girl, they're not given opportunities. And I mean it. It's like you always, many times, okay, you're going to see this where the uh, boy is going for karate classes. Yeah. But the sister is not going for karate. Why? She was not even asked whether she wants to go for karate. She just not given the choice of going. But the boy has to go for karate. Yeah. Honestly speaking, she needs to learn karate more for self defense. He does not. Exactly. <laughs> But she's not given the choice. I'm just saying in general. And freedom. Of, you need to ask your children. And this now this is I think this is more about parenting. The parents have to ask their children. Do you want this? Do you not want this? What do you want? What do you want is what do you want to do is very important. That is not asked. as per stats again i remember reading 82% of uh, indian families indian parents indian yeah let's say indian parents force their children to study what they want them to study and this is only reported 82% so you get the point now this is not about boy and girl this is in general exactly. but for a girl it's kind of more yeah. and for a girl on top of that education is not given importance I think that's why problems happen after marriage when there's abuse and all they cannot go back. The parents don't uh, parents do not accept them back. They don't have an education. They don't have any work experience, so they cannot earn any money. How are they going to survive? They don't have an education. Where are they going to get a job? So because of that, then they just stay in that marriage. Yeah, they can't even leave that place. They cannot leave. Exactly, that's a problem. And if they leave, there'll be people after them, and then there's a lot going on. I can understand. You know, when people stay in that, you cannot really blame. you cannot blame her for staying in that marriage you can to some extent but you can't really blame her right she has her problems you have to try to understand why now if she has had some help then there's a possibility that she comes out of it and there's so many instances where these wonderful women have come out of abusive marriages and done wonderful things that's because she's got some help so i'm lucky and privileged that i know if something happens my dad will say come home no problem you can stay home with us forever i don't have the problem but everybody is not really i've seen lots of families their parents are not going to accept them because since birth the girl is considered a liability okay we get her married she's gone and then she's not ours anymore and that's why the surname also changes just to let you know anish once the mm-hmm. surname after marriage the surname changes she's not part of her parental family anymore she's part mm-hmm. of the other family so that is another problem education i think They are usually they're not given. I was I'm privileged enough to be given whatever education I wanted. I didn't have a problem. But most people are not given because of which they face difficulties. Now I also learned chess, a skill that I can use to earn a living. But mm-hmm. others are not given that opportunity to you know get a skill and learn something because if they have some skill, they can make use of it to earn a living later, right? Yeah. But they, and the point is they don't have any work experience because they're at home just being housewives. They're expected to just be housewives. Now or now of course in urban areas things are changing. of course i'm not saying no people want working wives because you know you want to earn together and everything but you get the point most of india like 70% of india is rural so you know what is still going on you know in the 70% plus the urban areas because we are not perfect either there's lots going on even in urban areas so we are really really behind over here so one thing is freedom of choice next is the opportunities i think very very important which yeah. regardless of gender you should be given but it does not happen thank you thank you for sharing this because i never looked at it in this way and now when i when i look back at you know uh, like i told you about this part uh, where i was this rebellious sort of person and i always wanted to do things in my way and stuff like that and that was because i never had that choice in mm-hmm. my uh, in my schooling i'm not talking about my parents my parents have been beautiful yeah. amazing people 
uh, but I'm talking about my schooling when that happened. The only choice I had when I tried to interact is I was just shunned away. Like I was just, I was, I was always trying to fit in, and I didn't have that yeah. choice to actually interact with people and understand how people talk. And that's why yeah. we had that, you know, conversation online, and it was not that healthy. You know, when we had that debate, it was not that healthy because I was still trying to figure out how to communicate. You know, and that's what happened. And I realized this that I have made bad decisions in my life, not because I'm a bad person. But because I didn't have good information, yeah, exactly. and I didn't have good skills, I didn't have good knowledge. So if we just, you know, give these people with bad experiences, good experiences and good skills, like you said, and good knowledge, it can change a lot of things. Yeah, so I, I love that you brought that up. The education is very important, Anish. Like yeah. you know, our like even in India, women are really. Unsafe. It's a very unsafe country. Whatever you and I may say that it is very safe, it's very unsafe. Okay. How we may I may seem that I'm not patriotic saying it, but that's not the case. A fact is a fact. No, you it's have unsafe. faced it in Goa, which is the which is the modern which is the modern state. Uh, it's supposed to be the modern state in. Actually, yeah. My first few experiences when I was younger, that was not in Goa, but it was a family member, so you can just yeah, consider. Yeah, saying that even though yeah. it was modern. Yeah, you faced it. So there is. A- And by the way, the family member was very much educated. It's not that they were no. not educated, but exactly. but as you mentioned, education I think is very very important because only that can help you know bring some change. Otherwise, nothing's going to change because as you mentioned, mentality is very important. Education can help bring that change and will help bring that change. But it's not necessary that because you're educated, you're not going to do that. You have to later on you know be conscious enough, but. Very first step is education, definitely. I will correct you over here. I will call that person literate. I won't call him educated. He has okay. learned his yeah. stuff. He has learned his stuff, but he is not. There's barely any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are right. Actually, I use the wrong no, word. He is, I he is remember, not educated. Yeah. No, no, you're he's right. He is literate. You're right, you're right. He has learned the degree, whatever, but he is not educated enough to understand. <laughs> No, no, you're right. You're right. I remember reading this quote about literate and educated some years ago, and I kind of yeah, slipped off my mind. I should have used the right word. I should have used the right word. That's no, right. It's, it's completely literate. Fine. Yeah, but anyway, I just wanted to mention that you know, he was, as you mentioned, literate very well, and he was high. Whatever. It's not only about study, even sports, everything, and still this happened. So yeah. it's not that just because somebody is, you know, let's say, learn so much or you know, goes to college that they won't do it. That's not the case. But there's a higher possibility of not doing it because of the yeah. exposure they get. You need that exposure. There's a higher possibility of also understanding it and not yes. like because I was I was not this I was not this grown before. As soon as I got, uh, you know, uh, influenced by growth and mm-hmm. you know, healing and everything, that's when I realized that you know. maybe i was a person who was very rebellious i was very rude i was very violent probably and now i have changed i've become more calm and all of that like i i was a part of a lot of fights in school and everything i think to be called <laughs> and all of that so that so it grounds me you know all yeah. of that because i could have gone the wrong path if you see it if i was around people who were only doing that i could have gone on that path yeah. so understanding that what i could have been and what i am mm. right now it obviously grounds me and that's why that's why i wanted to like also yeah. bring this up if you consider the most successful people in any field right they have feminine qualities and yeah. if you consider anybody because they are able to express themselves openly consider all the actors or businessmen they are able to express themselves think about it when they get into problems they can express themselves they have feminine qualities and that's why they reach there so you need to have both people uh, give importance only to one and that is what we are taught to as kids and i'm not kidding girls are also you know we are taught to be this way but if you are a rebel then you want to be the other way